Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Going on to a new su subject here. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Be careful where you venture. Not a, here the temple. Not all places were you allowed to be in the temple of God. There was a king that went into the, the incense altar. He ended up with leprosy. The holy place and the most holy place in the courtyard had restrictions of the people. Priests could go into high place, but only the high priest once a year could go into the most holy place. And we open up the, the 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 Gospel of Luke. We are in the high place where no one else could go. So don't go walking around. Don't think that you know you have a right. There are some places that are sacred. And be more ready to hear. Now Paul gives a commandment. He says women are to keep silent in the churches. I don't know if you've ever been in most churches that I've been in. All of them. Man, there is just a ruckus of voices and talking about things and things and other things that the pastor, when he gets up the pulpit, this guy is screaming out, Hey, everyone, time for the service. Shut up. That don't know to be. I've been in churches where that talk is about sports and ball games and careers and anything but God. That should be outside the door. That should be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Not Sunday, not, not the midweek service. That's about the Lord. That's about what the Lord has done for you. Problem is, if people didn't talk about the worldly things in some churches, when it came time for church, they would be complete silence because there would have been nothing done for God and God done nothing for them. Be more ready to hear from God. Stop and listen. Than to give the sacrifice of fools. Sacrifice is given to yourself. And a fool, when you when we go into the book of Proverbs, is anybody up for God? Matter of fact, it, Psalm says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There are people who don't believe in God, who don't know anything about God, and walk in there with a sacrifice. Only to do it because my parents are dragging me in by my hair. In order to make peace with her, i got to go to church with her. And there are men in churches that the wives have to drag them. There are people who go to church just because, well, that was, that was what mom, grandma, great-grandma, great-grandma, great-great-grandma done. Oh, my God, a tradition. And you don't want a foolish sacrifice because it will not be given to your account. The sacrifice of Christ on the cross is not foolish despite what the modern Bible says. Now, for me to stand in the street corner and preach, that's foolish. Yes, it is. To be screaming at people, that's foolish. Not the message I preach about the gospel. And yet, when you read the modern Bibles, they say the message that is preached is foolish. Wow. For they consider, the fools consider not that they do evil. Revelation 2.7 They think they're doing a religious thing. They think that God is happy. And it's evil. Lord, didn't we? Depart from me. But Lord, didn't we? I never knew you. But Lord, you workers of iniquity. Scripture with Scripture. There are going to be many Christians that think they're doing right and they're going to walk away bald. No crown. And dust and fire and ashes. There are going to be people at the great white throne judgment going to be cast off in the lake of fire thinking they're saved. But their work is evil. 
Listen, this this Christian rock, this Christian contemporary music, this Christian booze, this Christian bringing the game, these Christian carnivals, these Christian magic shows, all this is a work of evil because it's a work of Satan. I don't care what name you put on it. And you'll find out one day it's a work of evil in the house of God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Be not rash. Hasty. Rash. Sounds like a disease. Some people have a disease of the rash of the mouth and it's not little itchy red sores. It's, it's being too quick to speak. Think about what you're going to think, going to say. And let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Brother, we're going to go out uh, witnessing. Oh, I'll go. Oh, man, you know what? I didn't check my calendar first. Faith promise. We went through that. Well, give money. We don't even know what you're giving to. Have a shoebox for, for a child in India. Okay. You don't look at what it's about. And you committed yourself to do something before God in God's house, which has nothing to do with God, and it's evil. I see we're not going to get far in this chapter. And when you read Revelation chapter 4 of the Laodicean church age, which we are presently in today, my jury of your churches of the Christians that are saved are doing evil works. The few are doing what is right. And there are just many churches that are going the way of the Broadway and Christ doesn't know them. And they do anything and everything to bring in congregations for money. A preacher will preach anything he wants. Lord, you know that, that family won't. Leave. That family will leave. I won't preach that message. Well, that's not Christ. Be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven. You forget where God is. And thou upon the earth, what are we? God is in the eternal heaven, eternal abode, eternalness. We are on a planet where we're going to be buried in. We are made out of what this what this planet is made out of. We have to look up to God, and God has to look down to us. When we look to heaven, we see God. Then we see the angels, the therapists, and all that. Revelation 4. But when you look down from a spaceship upon Earth, let's take any spaceship. It's above Florida. It's above the clouds where all the satellites are. It takes a picture of Florida. I can't find myself in that picture even though I'm here in Florida. You know, you could... Step into Daytona Beach, Florida anytime and snap the picture randomly. And the great chances are I may never be in that picture. One chance out of a carbillion, I guess, would you just snap a picture randomly to get me in it. And yet when I look to heaven, I see and only think about God. You think you could take the earth and spin it and stop it at a spot and put a finger down and there you are? I don't think so. See, we forget who we are and we forget who God is. And a lot of churches, I've been in a lot of churches. And it's about the people. I've been in churches where a plaque on a wall, on the wall this city gives this church you know, for the people. Listen, if you're doing what God told you to do, marvel not the world hates you. Yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. They gave Jesus no plaque.
something wrong. You're serving man and not God. When God came down here, they gave him a cross and a borrowed tomb. Therefore, let thy words be few. John Wesley would only talk to a person for 15 minutes. By chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. At the end of 15 minutes, he figured there was nothing more to be said and would be a sin, and he would stop the conversation. All right, if we did that, if we did that with our conversation, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business, matters of thoughts, of concerns, you're doing something. You're, you're going to be thinking about, how can I do it? What can I do it? Can I do it better? You're going to have visions and, and dreams at night and daydreams thinking, what can I do better? That's normal. A lazy person doesn't have anything because he's even too lazy to dream. He's got visions of the postman delivering his, his, his wealth. And he's so lazy, he wants the government to deliver everything to his door. And, okay, a dream cometh through a man that worketh business. And, contradiction thereof, of, of, of the character of a man, a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. You know somebody talks a lot? That's a guy who's a fool. The one that's involved in business and all that, he's quiet because he's thinking, he's... He, he reserves himself. He only speaks when it needs to be. Proverbs speaks about answering a matter before you even hear the, hearing it. You're a fool. Ecclesiastes and Proverbs go together. They're written by the same man. And Solomon goes on about the fool so you will not be a fool. I sure wouldn't, would not want that as my new name in heaven, fool, or folly. When thou vowest a vow unto God, Lord, you get me out of this battle, battlefield, and I'll... Lord, you get me out of this predicament, I'll... Do you take this man? Do you take this woman? Defer means delay or put off. Defer not to pay it. What you value, you better go through it all the way. You can't write it off. Well, first John one nine and put it under the blood. For he God has no pleasure in fool. You made a vow to God and you didn't finish it out. The Bible reckons you as a fool. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Now there was a sacrifice you could bring to the temple, a vow that you made that you were unaware of. How much of a awareness of that vow were you? The vows, Leviticus 27, number 6, Numbers chapter 30. You know how sacred a vow is to God in the Bible? That a woman under her father or her husband She's the father or the husband. She makes a vow. If she's under her father, her father says, Okay, I, God, make that void. I'll bring a sacrifice to the temple. I will not allow that vow. 
a wife makes a vow, her husband said, you know, God, bring a sacrifice to the altar. I'm not going to allow that vow. On the father or the husband, God says, okay, that vow is clean. You can't find that with a man. You can't find a woman step in and well, I'm not going to allow my husband to do that. There's nowhere for that. A widow, if she vows a vow, she has to stand to it. Now Hannah made a vow to God about her, her firstborn son, Samuel. And her husband, Limit, comes in and says, you know, you got to bring that boy to God, you said. Let me wean him. Then I will. So her husband allowed that vow. When she came home to her husband, you know, the first son that we have, I'm going to give it to God. No, 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 you're not. I disallow that. And he would have had all right. Which shows you that he loved God enough, too, to give that firstborn son. He had other children by the other wife. And I'm trying to show you how much God vows a vow. You know, his vows that he has made has forever and been forever to be. He has vowed to us eternal life that we'll never lose it. What if he treated his vows to us like we treat our vows to him? You ever see a rainbow? You know when God sees that rainbow that you see the rainbow? He thinks about the covenant he made with Noah and, and those animals long, long time ago. And still remembers. There are people who made vows that didn't even remember what the vows until they appeared before the judgment. Saved their loss. Better it is that thou shouldst not vow. 23 times in this book you find the word better. 20 times in Proverbs. Twice in the Song of Solomon, the books that Solomon writes. 117 times in the Bible the word better shows up. And this better is you better not, you better you just not vowed at all. A hundred and seventeen betters in the Bible, twenty one show up in this book, and one of the betters here is you just better not vow. And there are all kinds of vows, I can't name them. Whatever situation that you were in, if God were to get you out, it's like the story of a roofer on top of a roof. He's up there, he's hammering away. Next thing you know, he loses footing and he's falling down the roof. And it's a steep roof and a long drop. He's praying to God, God, if you get me out of this, I'll go to church. God, if you get me out of this, I'll do this. Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll tie. And at the very point where he was going to fall, there was a nail that caught his britches. And he's hanging by that nail in his britches. And he turns to God and says, Oh, God, never mind. I'm saved. He didn't think that maybe God put that nail there. But now that I'm okay, wipe it, wipe the slate clean. Now the question is, is a vow a sin that you can put under the blood? Because it looks like God will hold you to it. Now, if you go into these religions and you have no better and you make these vows that they make, there is a covering. But everybody in America knows the vow of marriage and how sacred and concentrated it is to be, and yet it's not. A man that's brought up under the prayer of a mother and under the Bible of a father and under a proper church ends up in a battlefield somewhere and tells God he'll go to church if he gets him out. He knows what he's doing. And he's reacting by the conscience that God has given him. Now, I don't know where that fine line is. I'm not going to about to say it. 
And I'm not going to say First John 1 9 is not going to cover it. I am not going to say that. Because if it's a sin, he'll cover it. But it's better that you should not vow than that thou shouldst vow and not pay. Matthew 5.33 It's likened to a debt. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Oh, so it is a sin. And it can be put under the blood. Well, but how strong is it? What about all the vows that you made that you didn't put under the blood, maybe? That you forgot? Maybe you prayed to God that you would act a certain way if you became a, a spouse, a parent, or you had a good church, or something that you made when you were a child. See, there's no age. Neither say thou before the angel, the angel, a Pacific angel, and I'm not going to say who. Because I don't know. And I read some of the commentaries, and one speaks of, you know, how they would reflect the pastor or the reverend of the church. I don't know. Liken to the angel of God. I've seen some pastors and reverends of churches or anything, but. <laughs> okay, this vow business. You're to be more ready to hear. And it, it's a sacrifice of fool. It's called evil. You're not to be rash with your mouth. It involves your heart. For with the man believes, for with the heart man believes on the righteousness. It's called utterance anything before God. God is in heaven. We are on this miserable planet called Earth. It's called a fool's voice, a multitude of words. And Matthew tells us that by every single word we speak, we will be judged. And when thou vowest a vow, defer not to pay it. Do not delay. Do not put it off. And that's not saying you're not going to do it. Just don't delay. Get on with the business. Or you'll be a pleasure of a fool. Pay that which thou hast vowed. It's a payment. And it's been better for you not to vow. Then it speaks about not paying the vow. Allow your mouth not to cause your flesh to sin. Well, it was just an error. Read Jude 11 and 1 John 4, 6 on the error. Which was wickedness and sin. One of them almost destroyed Israel. By a man named Bellum. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice? You want God angry with you? Who wants God angry with them? What has been the subject? And destroy the work of thy hands. Let's put that for a Christian. You can lose rewards. 
John says in Second John, which we're doing our Second John study, is that you lose not a full reward. That you get the full reward, and we've been studying that. That's by letting religious people and wishing them, you know, good day, God bless you day, and all that kind of day to people like Jehovah Witnesses. You can lose a reward. You can lose a reward by a vow that you made to God and you don't pay it. In the Old Testament, you would have lost crops, money, home, family. Under the law. You could even get a disease for angering God. That king could have walked into the, the holy place with the best intentions. To offer incense with the best intentions. He angered God and he got leprosy for the rest of his life. He couldn't be with his family. They had to build him a, se a separate house. God was angry with us that he just wanted to fix the ark because it trembled. The ark stumbled. God shot him down. Your vow today as a Christian and not doing it may have cost you a couple crowns. Or so I don't know what I don't know what the what the exchange rate is. If you remember a vow that you made to God that you can keep, get at it. Get going. If you say, well, God, you know, get me, I'll be a preacher, and, and you're not called to preach, you get busy studying for, for the, as a preacher in the ministry, and maybe God will use you for something else by the effort. I'll study the Bible like a preacher should. A preacher is not just a man that stands in the pulpit. Then somebody goes to somebody's door, stands on the street corner where people at work and tells them about the gospel. That's the preacher too. For in a multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities, all kinds of vanities, with many words and dreams. I have a dream that's destroyed America. And the conclusion of the whole thing what will make you less words? What will make you go to, to hear God speak and not you? What would make you not to make such a vow? What would make you please God? But fear thou God. And I believe we studied that the other night in uh, the Gospel of Luke study. If you truly fear God, you will seek God before you do anything with your mouth or sign your name to anything. And when you have signed your name, when you have spoken, and you have not done, you have sinned. And you are a sinner under God right now if you have never put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are contracts. There are vows. There are loans. There are papers. There are things that you have put your name down that you would do and you did not do. And you have sinned. And it angers God. And you may have lost things because of that. One of the things you may have lost is character. You may have lost a good name. You may have lost the testimony. It's what the Bible says. 
destroy the work of thy hand. I have lost a lot of things because of my big mouth or because of something I have done, and that is a law, a rule written in the Holy Bible. See, that's not the thing we put on our wall. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We don't put that if I do something as a vow or something to my name before God, that God will destroy my works if I don't do it. You don't put that on a plaque, on a coffee cup. They should have this section of this Bible right under every spot where you're to sign your name as an oath or as an ob ob obligation of doing something, of a promise. And there have been true, good pastors and people of the church who have been swindled and scammed and, and everything out of money and they love to help someone and then someone else to say, you know, I'll pay you back and then walk away and never do. And let me tell you, that angers God. I don't know what that angel is in verse 6, but I don't want to find out. Because the Bible says for us Christians, we shall judge angels. Don't you know that? We shall judge them. Well, here it is that it was, uh, no. neither say thou before the angel, you talking to the angel. God takes vows very, very serious. And again, if you do not vow, if you do not pay that vow, it makes God angry. And if you think you got away with it, Christian, on this earth, nothing's happened to you, everything's been fine and dandy, wait till you stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ and see what? Destroy the works of thy hands. You know, the gospel tracts, the witnessing, whatever you, you know, the money you've given. See, I tithed. I gave up gospel tracts. I made an offering to God. I didn't pay it. Verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest in the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. See, I can do everything I, I, I'm supposed to, but if I got this thing on me that, you know, angers God, it's a sacrifice of a foolish man. That's pretty hard. That's a hard saying. And for some people, there are some vows. How do you get out of it? Contrite. Broken spirit, true repentance of the heart. I've been given a new life and make what best I can with that. And whatever comes my way because of, of that, Lord, just help me to go through it, help me to write it out, and to your honor and glory. But let's go and talking about vows. Let's let's nail it down. If we don't fulfill what we said with our mouths, with our hands signing, it angers God. And there is a destruction. There is a loss. Because when you vow a vow to, or you sign your name to something, and you don't do it. Somebody is at a loss. 
If somebody gives me fifty dollars and I tell them I'll give it back to them, and I never do, that person's out fifty bucks. Somebody has an extra fifty that they should not have. And be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. You have fifty dollars and more that you've got to pay. I think it'd be a great time now to say, let's get on our knees and let's seek God about things we've said in our lifetime. Things that we have done in our lifetime. And seek the advocate to appease God for being foolish and running in the mouth. And not being more able to listen and to hear. Than to be a fool. That's what the Bible says.